And you know, we should all realize while listening to the song that we just heard that God is being asked, did I do all I could do in the time that you gave me? If you were asked this of God today, what would you want his reply to be? Tough question. If that question was asked, if you were asked to ask God that question today, what would you expect his answer to be? Or what would you like his reply to be? Not sure what your answer would be, but for me, mine's located in Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, where Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen? I like to think that I'm doing everything I can, which I know we fall short, but I like to think I'm doing everything that I can to serve God in the time that he gave me. And in our world today, it's easy to find ourselves easily straying away from God's will and commands for our lives. Very easy. We can find ourselves wasting the time and the opportunities that God has given us. And during this season, this time of year, there's no better time than to grasp hold of those, that time and those opportunities to reflect Jesus Christ to others. And each day, we are allotted the same amount of time as another. We receive 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, and 86,400 seconds in a single day, each day. And in the span of one year, we have 365 days to make a difference by doing everything we can for God in the time that he's given us. Once again, do we use that time wisely? There are three things we should focus on when it comes to our time. Consider how precious our time is. Choose carefully how we spend our time. And remember, we will be asked to give an account for the use of our time. First, as we consider how precious our time is, if you turn with James chapter 4, verse 14. James chapter 4, verse 14. Why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Think about that. Just a mist for a little while is the time we have. It is stated that something is precious depending on the importance of it or the degree in which it concerns our welfare. The sacredity of anything that causes men to set a higher value upon it, it's the old principle of supply and demand. Remember the toilet paper shortage? Very important to everybody. It was high, highly demanded, right? So toilet paper became precious. And that's what we're trying to say here is you've got to really understand the value you need to put on your time and how precious it is. Second, you choose, we choose carefully how we spend our time. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debrocracy. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, most people, or many people, spend necessary time working, eating, raising children, sleeping, shopping. And many people waste time on watching TV, video and computer games, Facebook, emails, or texting. Some of you may have a different list than that. But this is the basic. One question is, out of all that, how much time do you give to the Lord? 
we should remember our goal should be to spend our time loving God and loving people. If you're doing any of these things in order to love God and the people, then it's not wasted time. Only you can answer that. Are you using your time for the Lord and using it wisely? Third, we need to remember we will be asked to give an account for the use of our time. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Everything we just talked about to do with time, we backed up with Scripture. Amen? We should all realize that the decisions we make today can have an impact on eternity. We can experience unending joy or unending sorrow on the decisions we make today. Life in this world will come to an end one day. And very few people have escaped this world without dying. Even Jesus died. You know, we can try to save time in a bottle, but it can't be done. There's no fountain of youth in this life that can give us the many years back that we wish we had. There are shows out there that reveal before and after pictures that make people look younger. Many of you have seen them. And it's true, we can make ourselves appear younger. Plastic surgeons have proved that, amen? The fact is, even that really doesn't make us any younger. The date we were born is the date that we were born. That doesn't change. No diet, exercise, or plastic surgery can change that at all. It make us, might make us feel younger, but doesn't give us back the time already spent in our lives. Time is probably one of the most valuable things in our lives. And we may not realize that. And the reason I say that we don't realize that because I see so many people wasting their time on stuff that's not important at all, that they believe is important. I guess everybody has a different belief, but if you're not using your time as a focus for God and others, then pretty well you're wasting your time because that's what the Bible's about. You know, it's okay. We all have hobbies that we want to do. I love to fish, and I can spend a lot of time doing it. Ain't that right? No, no. Yeah. But I got to make sure I'm balanced. And that's a good word for everybody. Make sure you're balanced in what you do. Make sure you're using your time as a value for the Lord always. Even when we get on the lake, we want the Lord to acknowledge that we're there. And he's with us. And when we're around other people, even though we're enjoying a hobby that we have, we still are ready to share Jesus Christ at any moment that we're called on to do that. Or the opportunity arises. So are we using our time wisely in everything we do? You know, time can't be anchored down. To slow it down, it can't be done. We cannot grab it or hold on to it to make it last any longer. Time keeps moving and passing on. No matter what you do, it's still going to keep moving. Our time is easily lost. And all you need to do to lose time I want you to remember this. All you need to do is lose time is to do nothing at all. Because people do it all the time. Nothing at all. You know, as a pastor, I stand up here and I see what's going on in our world. And as a pastor, I want to say what I think. But God keeps restraining me from saying that because there's so much misconception. If we discuss that people are uneducated, I don't believe that's true. They're uneducated. The lack of common sense in this world today and the lack of God being in our lives is one of the biggest problems in this country today because there's not very much anymore.
But nobody fears God anymore. They think they're going to live forever. And it doesn't matter what they do or what they say. Time's going to move on. We're going to get past it. That's what they think. But the Bible tells us every knee will bow and acknowledge me. People need to remember that. But you have to believe in Jesus Christ to even remember that. So there's a lot of lost in this broken world. Amen? It's up to us to change that. Amen? And it's not by doing nothing. Because we've done nothing for too long. Christians have sat back and been passive for too long and done nothing. They think they're doing something. We are. We're coming to church and we're worshiping God the way we should, right? But what do we do beyond the walls of this building? There's some that do. I'm not criticizing everybody. I'm just trying to convict you if you're not doing it this morning that you would be the one to step out of your comfort zone and out of your box and start witnessing to somebody that Jesus Christ is the only way that you will ever have the time you need in your life. Amen? That's where we need to be. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. Matthew 25, beginning at verse 35. Jesus speaking here. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The, ting, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these, brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and, and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me, then they will go away to eternal punishment but the righteous to eternal life. Pretty direct, straight to the point. You cannot do nothing and expect to get into heaven. That's not what the Bible's about. That's not what Jesus Christ was sent here for, that we sit around and do nothing. Think, man, when I get to heaven, I'm probably just going to sit around, float on a cloud, and play a harp. I hope not. Because there's not a bass boat there, I'm going to be a little disappointed. But I think we're all going to have a job and we're all going to be expected to do something when we're in heaven. So why can't we do it today? Because in the Lord's Prayer it says, on earth as it is in heaven. That means start today, right now, here, before you get there. Make something happen. Time is so valuable that we forget to appreciate it. This is pretty direct. Some of you are not going to be here next year. You're not going to be here next year. It could be for various reasons. Various reasons. You may get tired of me. You may want to be somewhere else, right? It could be someone ruffled your feathers in the church. Someone sat in your chair. Somebody didn't speak to you. Or you could be killed, you could die and leave this world, but some of you will not be here next year. And think about that. The year's not that far away. So what is your time like? Do you have the eternal time that God has promised? That's scary to think about. 
And that's the problem is so many people don't want to think about that. Because that's depressing. It's scary. What's well, time? To be a little bit scared and fear the Lord. Because if you're not right with him and you're not doing right by him, then I don't want to think about those consequences in the future. I love each and every one of you. When I get to heaven where I know I'm going to be in heaven, me and my wife, I want to know you're going to be there with me. Amen? Amen? I love you here. I want to love you there. And the only way I can be assured of that, knowing that you have accepted Christ and that you're using your time wisely. Some of you may remember the old soap opera that used to start out by saying, like the sand through an hourglass, so are the days of our lives. (laughs) Right? Some of you may think, what is he talking about? Showing my age a little bit there, right? But that's what it's like. You know, we can flip this over and turn it over and start again. But think about this in this way. If we don't turn it over, and this is your life, and all the sand runs out, you're done. The time's gone. That's how you need to look at your life. You need to enjoy life. Because God didn't put us here not to enjoy life. We've started to enjoy life so much more once we accepted Christ. Some people fear that, think, man, I I accept Christ. I I can't do the things I used to do. You can still do them. It's called conviction. You don't want to do them if they're out of line, amen? It's not that you can't do them. You still have free will. God gives us all free will, right? But the conviction in your heart, the minute you step forward and get ready to do something, you know it's out of line, you go, oh, maybe I ought to think about that. That's where the changes come. And they come in small increments. You're not going to change overnight. You didn't get to where you are today in an instant. It took time. And you're not going to change overnight. But the day you allow Jesus Christ into your heart, the change starts on the inside. And it's just one little step at a time. I remember when I accepted Christ, you know, I wanted to change immediately, but some of the old red still came out from time to time. And it still does. Thank you. (laughs) We're all a work in progress. We're all like a piece of clay in God's hands. He's just molding us and shaping us. And we're like chess pieces where he's moving us from one place to another during seasons. And putting us where he feels like we need to be. But as long as we're allowing him to do it, we're using our time wisely. Amen? John chapter 9, verse 4. Jesus speaking once again. John chapter 9, verse 4. Jesus speaking. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Even Jesus realized that he had a limited time on earth. Even Jesus realized that. But he did all he could in the time that was given him. Amen? The Bible confirms that. That he did all he could. Did he have obstacles that got in his way? Yes, he did. A lot. Yes, he did. But that didn't slow him down. And that didn't keep him from using his time in the best way he could. Our time for God to live in is right now. Not, not only can God give us time upon time, he gives us eternal time. And the time that God can give us is unlimited unlimited it's called eternity how do we how would you really think about that eternity 
How long is eternity? I read a story about a, a, a mythical story about a little bird, just a little small bird that flew to the Atlantic Ocean and scooped up some water in its beak and it left there and it flew all the way to the Pacific Ocean and put that water in the Pacific Ocean. And it continued to do that over and over and over again. And if by chance the Atlantic Ocean ran out of water, he would start the process all over again. That's eternity. Never stops, never ends. Amen? That's what our time, how valuable it is when we come to know Jesus Christ. We have unlimited eternal time in our life at that moment. John 3, 16, Jesus speaking, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is a promise given by God. We have an opportunity that will ensure us our time in heaven will be eternal and never run out. John 3.16 is a promise. Not just to me. Not just to my wife. Not just to people. Some people it's a promise to everyone. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. That's eternal. In Jesus Christ, there are no time constraints at all. No limitations. And no effects of aging. You don't need a plastic surgeon. You need Jesus Christ. Amen? Our belief... And our acceptance of Jesus Christ guarantees us a life everlasting and eternal. You may be thinking today, hey, you know, I've already accepted Christ. I'm good. I've already been baptized. I'm solid. I'm good. Are you? Because if we have to give an account when we stand before Jesus, what's that account going to look like? After accepting Jesus Christ, are we doing the things that he expects us to do. Are we living for him or are we living for the world? Once again, only you can answer that. Today I pray that through this message that you would leave here with a better understanding of how precious our time is and that we would be about using our lives doing all we can in the time he's given us. Focusing more on the things that are important to God. Of course, God himself, your family, your friends, your neighbors. That's what's important to God. Sometimes we fail that and we stray, as the song says. And there we stand in firm against the devil's schemes. It's very important because the devil is the one that directs us to waste time. And he can only do that if we allow it. Our lifetime is short. And for us to sit around and watch it go by, we should not do. So let's start using our time in a way that would be beneficial and pleasing to the Lord. It's real simple. Let us use our time to help bring light into the darkness of this broken world. There's no softer hearts that appear than during the holidays. The time is ripe. Your godly living will reflect to others. Your witness and your light will be the reflection needed Maybe that might lead someone away from that darkness and into light. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I pray today that you start using your time wisely. 
understand how precious and valuable time is. Reflect on how you use it. Evaluate where your time goes in your life. If you have to, write it down. You'll see you have much wasted time in your life and that you may not be giving the Lord the time he deserves. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We lift this morning to you, Father. Father, we're so thankful for your just your love, your grace, and your mercy you show upon us. Father, we are thankful in the time that you've given us. And Father, I pray today that we use that time in the most valuable way that would be beneficial to you and others. Father, that we use that time to be a witness and a light to a world that is just struggling in the darkness. Father, I pray that we continue to use our time to reach out to others. That we take that valuable and precious time and spend it with family and friends and our neighbors, Father, that we could be that witness. Father, I pray that each and every one of us use our time wisely for you. Father, that we focus on you. And understand that everything we have, especially our time, comes straight from you. So, Father, this morning I just pray that we leave here with a true understanding of how precious time is. And, Father, that we continue to be the light of the world that you expect us to be. Father, we love you. We praise you. I pray today that everything we said, everything we did was uplifting, pleasing, and glorifying to you. And I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.